Broadway Interludes presented by Art Lab. I'm your host, Megan Chocolis, and I am joined by the beautiful Jennifer Sanchez. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Megan, for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, Jennifer is such a big fan of Art Lab, and Art Lab is such a big fan of Jen. You're amazing, number one. And number two, I want to talk about two shows specifically. I want to talk about your time in Amore, and I want to talk about First Date, both virtual. Okay. What was that like? Art Lab came to me as this beautiful gift during what was a really kind of lonely <laughs> and isolating, like, apartments, like, uh, like prison. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened was that my apartment turned into this space to create. And what Art Lab did was offer a branch of connection with my fellow castmates and the entire team and all of these creative people who wanted to make something when it really felt like it was impossible. It felt like it was an impossible task to create and to shoot and to rehearse a musical wholly virtually. Like there were no people in the apartment. There was like, we had things delivered to us and we had to learn how to set things up ourselves. So, you know, I pulled out the ladder, but it was so collaborative and, um, like, I realize I do not like Zoom. Nobody loves Zoom. Who loves Zoom? I don't know. But what I will say <laughs> is that I actually looked forward to waking up and opening the laptop and seeing all of these pe people's faces who had also, like, set up all this equipment and were here and were ready. I mean, and there are, there are, there are some... Um, it left some marks behind. Like, I have some loving holes in my wall. I could not figure <laughs> out how to put the, the curtain up. You know, right, right. so I did, I, I may have, I did nail <gasps> bop, 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 the green screen into the wall. Jen. But, yes, <laughs> I climbed, <laughs> I climbed the ladder and like it was falling and I was like trying to set up the thing and I was just like, and you know, <laughs> should I have asked hmm. permission from the person, my partner, who I share the space with? Perhaps. Hmm. Did I? No, it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. And so, you know, <laughs> you don't notice. It was very tall up. Who's going to see that? <laughs> so I did nail the green screen into my wall. And Perfect. it was worth every moment. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it looked like you guys were having a lot of fun. Just watching. It looked so professional and it was put together so impressively. And you could really tell that all of you were just like living for these moments of filming. Well, I mean, it's this beautiful score that I had never heard before. And so I've, you have this opportunity to fall in love with the score and then you have this like completely A-list team. And then like my scene partner, Kara Lindsay and I, we have this like, it's kind of a trio, but it's kind of a duet where we go to visit him in jail. And I think it was in the lyric. I don't remember how or why, but I did get to consume many eclairs. What I will say is that I learned some lessons about singing with an eclair. So if you're singing with an eclair, maybe you can get, there are some things you can get away with on stage that maybe you cannot get away with in a close up. Learned those lessons, didn't teach that in college, didn't learn that in college, I didn't, I missed that class in college. <laughs> But now I know so much, so many, so many, so many beautiful lessons. I'm serious though, I'm serious. Like so many beautiful moments. And um, it was a challenge because it was kind of like, you know, like you had to have your in-ears and you had to have, you know, the orchestra in here and you were recording solo. But then when it all came together, it was so beautiful. Here's something being born out of a time when nothing should or could be happening. And here we were. And, and all of these beautiful, like incredibly talented, incredibly wonderful people coming together to make something. Amour. I mean, I, it says it all in the name, right? Love. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how did you get started in theater? Like how old were you when you first started acting and performing? <sighs> 
Um, I think I distinctly remember like singing karaoke at a mall, which was a thing when I was younger. Like you would go to the mall and then you would sing to your karaoke track, which was probably like Debbie Gibson. I know it's Deborah now, but back then it was Debbie. <laughs> and um, I was, I think I was four. I think I was four. And I just, as soon as I could, I don't know if I started singing or speaking first, but I told every. I mean, I was like, I'm going to be a singer. So <laughs> I don't know where, I don't really don't know where I came from. But what I will say is that my mother, her dream, she had three girls, but my baby sister came like a decade later. So she had my sister and I, and we're closer in age. And my mother always wanted, she played guitar and my father plays guitar. And my mother always wanted someone to harmonize with, to Aww. sing like her favorite songs. So right when we were out of the womb, she started teaching my sister and I to harmonize with her. So Janelle would get the lower harmony and I would take the top and my mom would take melody, pretty sure. And we would sing like, we sang at like an Alamogordo. Anybody know Alamogordo? Anybody been there? Very small town in New Mexico, White Sands, you should go. Um, but we would sing it like the Alamogordo, like 4th of July, like open mic, like people would get up and we would sing like, yellow bird, high up in yellow bird. We would, three part harmony, banana tree. I don't know why we sang that song. Um, but she wanted us to harmonize with her and so we did. And um, my, my, my younger sister Janelle, she, um, June, she goes by June. She ended up being, uh, she ended up dancing, so she's a dancer. And uh, she still remembers me, like, I would like, I would be like, you're not on your note. Oh. <laughs> I was not, it was awful. I'm like, you're not on your note, get on it. <laughs> I was like so serious about it, why? I was off, like, why? But, so yes, so I came out, I came out and I knew I wanted to be a singer. And so, here we are. I mean, I guess I'm still trying to be a singer. Maybe one of these days. <laughs> You're a singer, Jen. An amazing singer. <laughs> so Jen, you've been in so many shows and I have to ask, which has been your favorite? I mean, listen, you cannot, you cannot outdo your Broadway debut oh. for me. Mm -hmm. So I booked that job from an open call I did not have my equity card yet. I did not have any representation. I was fresh out of school and I stood online with like hundreds of other girls. And I was kind of like in this crazy space at the time in my life where like there were people in my life who were telling me, it's a waste of time, you shouldn't go. And um, I was a young single mother and my son was um, I think maybe six years old at the time. And so we like, we took the Crosstown bus. He came with me to my audition. It was in the summertime, so I didn't have, it was like between school, you know, like before he went back to elementary school, um, first grade. And um, I remember being on the bus and getting a text message and somebody saying like, oh, it's a waste of time. They're typing everyone out, blah, blah, blah. And um, I was like, I'm already on the bus. I already paid for our fare. Like, so we're going to the audition. And so like I kept him outside with like his little iPad in the hallway, Chelsea Studios, which is, I don't even know if it's, it's up anymore. And um, I, I think the audition was like on a Tuesday. My callback was on a Wednesday. I had the offer late Wednesday afternoon. Ooh. And I got the phone call from the Chelsea 99 cent store, which has been bought out since on 23rd Street. And um, I, t I was taking my son to buy a toy because he was so well behaved. You just, does it get more special than that? You know, it changed my life. It opened every door. It opened every door. And so for that, I will always thank Arthur Lawrence for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And for lifelong friends who are still like my, my family, who are my family from that show. So there's, I don't think that, um, I've, all, every show is so beautiful and wonderful, but for me, like, that's like, how do you top that? Yeah. Oh, that's such a special story. And because you've been in so many Broadway shows, 
Do you happen to have a favorite Broadway theater? Well, yes. Okay, so I love the palace. I would like to go back after it's been raised up.、Mm. They're physically raising it, right? Yeah. It's still under construction now. So that would be amazing to go back into that space. The Belasco is haunted. A hundred percent. A thousand percent. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that they are scary ghosts.、Mm. I I don't know that. I've had definitely some very ghosty moments throughout the theater. There is a, an apartment sitting above the Belasco, where they say a woman. Fell to her death in the elevator, and we were not allowed access to that apartment space. However,、um, my friend and I did sneak up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the start of every horror movie. We weren't allowed to go there, so we did. Yeah, <laughs> because have you met me? Also, it was her idea. Okay. <laughs> it was her idea,、mm -hmm. and this is me since high school. Somebody's like, "You want to go do this thing?" And I'm just like, "Yeah, sure. That sounds fun. <laughs> like, how exciting! A new thing!" And so we snuck up, and we had to climb these like really sketchy stairs. And we get up there, and it's like cobwebs, like. And all I will say is that the energy felt like ice. Like I had goosebumps, I had ice, and I just went up there and I breathed this breath, and I was just like, and I said out loud, I was like, I honor you, and I said we gotta go, we just we gotta go, and we left, and that was about it. But I, but there are many, many a Broadway ghost story,、um, but the feeling of cold and the feeling of、um, breathlessness that came over me. Um, it was just like a, it was like a reminder, like respect the spirits, and also I feel very much I'm a very superstitious person, and、um, I'll never forget the opening night of Ghost the Musical. It was like the night when like every major reviewer Ben Brantley was there from the Times, etc., etc. Everyone was there, and like all of a sudden I'm on stage and I just feel this energy, and then all of a sudden like we had these. Incredible, like screens that showed all of these.、Um, they were like LED screens, and the LEDs just like these little, like they're almost like those, like、um, oh my gosh, what do they call them when you put them? The light bright. Yes, yes, light bright. Light bright. Yeah, light bright. They started popping out, and I'm like on stage doing some something, and I feel this energy, and then I feel I hear like a crack, and I'm only saying this. Okay, and I will, and I and I hear this crack, and I just like instinctively like turn my head to the crack, and I just start picking up light brights from the stage, and like it was like they were being pushed out of the LED screen, and um, if you go back and read, we had to, we had to stop the show. And we stopped the show for a really long time. Like Richard went out with his guitar and sang like Unchained Melody, like basically begging the audience to stay. And they were very generous and kind. And Richard's amazing. So like, listen, money's worth just from that one song alone. But、um, if you go back and read the reviews, the entire reviews were about the stop and about the LED and if Broadway should or should not be. This technical and X Y Z, and, and didn't even talk about the show, which was a beautiful show. Yeah, and it had some of the most amazing magic. We were trained by Dave Copperfield's、um, people, like, and we were in these incredible, like, black dark mesh outfits, and like, we would slink across the stage, and like, my personal track was、um, the cigarette. So I would like he would like remember when he's learning to use his powers, right? Yeah, and he would like kick it or flick it or whatever he did, and so I'd be like, it was like so it was like the most stressful part of my show, and I'd just be <laughs> like, I'd be like, okay, I can, I'm gonna make this pack of cigarettes like come to life, and I'd be doing this stuff, but I mean I had like cigarette magic training for many weeks before we opened the show, 
And it really was magical. Yeah. But I don't know. I think those ghosts, they try to try. They, they want to have a little fun. I don't think that they're nasty. And I don't think that they're, you know, but I think that they like to have a little fun. Mm. I think. You heard it here first. Do you happen to have a dream role that you've yet to play? I do. I do have a dream role and a dream show that I would like to do again. And I don't know if I'm allowed to do this because I've already done the show, but I want to do it again in a different role. Um, the show is Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. And so I don't know if you relate to the title. I know that I certainly do. <laughs> I certainly did and I still do. Mm. And um, I um, understudied the role of Candela, mm. but would I love to play it? Yes, I would. And why? Because she's really, really smart. And she also gets a 17 page patter song in which <laughs> she's like teetering around in like stilettos and costumes and she's doing all these amazing things. And um, I just, David Yazbek is a genius and the score is stunning. And um, so yes, I would like to do that again if and when it comes around. Um, but the, I think the most interesting thing about this show um, is that there are so many excellent roles for women. Mm. So you have Candela, who is the model, who has model behavior. And then you have Peppa, who is uh, a woman of a, who is like entering kind of a different phase of her life. She's an actress and she is going through a really like uh, gut-wrenching she's being like deserted by this man who is you know full of it and then you have the role that um patty lapone played mm -hmm. who is um who has just like been released from an asylum <laughs> <laughs> yeah and is kind of stuck in the past and you and and there are more actually so originally I played uh, Christina, who was the secretary, the very nosy secretary, who I think she should get her own spinoff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so in that case, yes, should Christina get a spinoff and should she get her own show? Yes. But if that doesn't happen, then I would love to actually play the role of Candela, which was brilliantly brought to life by Laura Benanti mm -hmm. in the uh, Broadway production. Well, speaking of model behavior, would you like to sing it for us? Well, I mean, I don't know what. Yes, I do. Peppa, it's midnight. Are you screaming? It's 3 a.m. You have to call me. I would never do this to you. What kind of a friend? What was the name of that cheese that I like? This has been Broadway Interludes presented by Art Lab. See you next time and thanks for watching. Salud! <laughs>